welcome to Your Health, where we explore the latest in health across the country. I'm Erica Cardenas. As women, we typically are the caretakers and sometimes forget about our own health. So today, we're talking women's health and what you can do to become a healthier woman. But before we get started, let's take a look at what's coming up on the show. We'll see how a spa can do more for you than provide relaxation. And how our daily use of phones is creating new aches and pains plus a healthier way of eating thanks to a program from WW. All that and more on this episode of Your Health. Women are typically the caretakers, and with that, sometimes we neglect our own health. So joining us today is Dr. Sharon Thompson to give us more information about what it means to be a healthy woman. Welcome, doctor. Thank you so much for having me. First off, what does it mean to be a healthy woman? Well, I think that's hard for most women to even get a handle on because as you said, women are so used to putting themselves last that sometimes it's a big aha moment to even talk about putting themselves first. But I think for most people to be a healthy person, you wanna look at what you're eating, the activity that you're doing every day, and importantly, super neglected is your mental health. So doctor, tell us what are the three top tests that all women should have? Women, I have to say, I have to give them credit, are very good at going into the doctor every year. So most women are familiar with getting their pap test, and you don't need it every year actually, but you should follow up with your physician and follow your physician's advice on when you need your pap test. Another uh, test that most women need routinely is a look at your blood test. So what's your blood glucose? What's your cholesterol? You should have a good idea of those, not just when they become problems, but so that you can intervene if there's something that needs to be addressed. For younger women, so if you're in your 20s and 30s, so STD testing is pretty important, right? Because women in that age group are more sexually active, they haven't settled down yet, so that becomes very important. Part of being an adult, I tell my patients, is being responsible enough to find out. Now, doctor, what numbers do women specifically need to be aware of when it comes to their health and testing? That's an outstanding question, and, and I would say especially for women. Because one of the things that most women don't understand or don't haven't been told is that pregnancy impacts your future health. So for women, especially if you've had complications in your pregnancy, there are some extra things that you should know. So all of us should know what our blood pressure is. But if you've had preeclampsia or blood pressure issues during your pregnancy, it's even more important for you to know that every single year. If you've had, all of us should know what our blood sugar is. But if you've had diabetes during your pregnancy, again, you should have a test for diabetes every single year. Those things also mean that a woman should have a cardiologist who's her friend, because women who've had those problems during pregnancy have a higher rate of heart disease later on in life. We should all also know our cholesterol numbers. And you may have heard um, someone talk about uh, bad cholesterol, your LDL cholesterol, versus good cholesterol, your HDL cholesterol. Those are important. Women tend to have a pretty good HDL, but you want to know what your number is because HDL, that good cholesterol, is the one that can keep you healthy. So those are some important numbers to know your blood sugar, your blood pressure, and your cholesterol, your HDL number. Doctor, self-care is a very important topic. What are some things that women can do to practice regular self-care? Absolutely, uh, such an important topic. And like I said earlier, most women are so used to doing for their kids and their husbands and their employers and their employees and they always put themselves very, at the very back of the line in terms of care. So I try to encourage women to move themselves up on that priority list. So the first thing is thinking about how much time every day do you spend thinking about you? Whether that is what you're going to eat, whether that is going, getting outside and getting some fresh air and taking a walk, or it's getting away from your desk for a few minutes a day, where do you put yourself on that priority list? How many minutes do you give yourself every day? That, that doesn't require a lot, right? It doesn't require a lot of changes, but even asking that one question raises the flag for many women in where they put themselves on the priority list and they start to make changes. So doctor, any final tips or advice on being a healthy woman? Remember that your doctor doesn't keep you healthy. You are in charge of keeping you healthy. The decisions you make every day are the ones that will support your baseline health. So you are the most important factor in maintaining your health. You have the power, it's really in your hands. Absolutely, well thank you so much for being here with us thank today, doctor. Thank you for doctor. having me. What an important topic to talk about.
Getting pampered is a must for all of us, and the Village Clubs offer spa treatments that do more than provide relaxation. Take a look. This is a playground for me because it's my passion, it's fun, it's enjoyable. I mean, it's fun to see that other people enjoy it as well. Everyone here is just so welcoming, so friendly, and they have everything possible here, everything. My name is Matt Coithen. I'm a massage therapist and personal trainer here at Ganey Village in Scottsdale, Arizona. Being a massage therapist and personal trainer, it's a little unique because you get to see different aspects of physical wellness. Um, you get to work with their flexibility, their range of motion, but also their strength, their exercise capacity, their endurance. My name is Allison Pregleman. I'm a member at the Ganey Village Health Club and Spa. I work out with Matthew maybe like once a week and he helps me with my form, he helps me with my strength. We do a lot of core workout. I really enjoy it because he's very easy to talk to and his personality makes the workout and stretching very enjoyable. We work out for about an hour and a half and after that I just want to go to bed. It, I'm dead. I'm very sore and then sometimes I'll come back and I'll get a massage from him because he's one of the best I think. The spa is set up just like any high-end spa. It's great amenities. Rooms are always going to be dimly lit. It's going to be a relaxing experience. Being able to do both massage and training hand in hand, it does make it a more enjoyable experience. And it's not always coming in and suffering and you know working out till you're exhausted. It's um, it allows people to really enjoy the process, enjoy the that dimension of growth, and it not just be uncomfortable the whole time. Being able to utilize massage therapy in regards to your training and fitness goals. It can help you with recovery, it helps with circulation, uh, can help flush the muscles out of you know, hydrogen ions, lactic acid, so you recover faster from your workouts. They'll work with your mobility. So if you have a shoulder injury or a back injury, they can dig into those muscles and really get you moving, break up some scar tissue, and keep your mobility up even after an injury. I have hip problems and a slip disc, so that's what the massage is for, and that's why I go see him when I'm lifting something too heavy, so then he can help me do it correctly. All the personal trainers all have four-year degrees. Most of us have several certifications and specialties, such as TRX, CrossFit, USA Powerlifting. The massage therapists are licensed. Some of us are board certified, so there's that educational background, but also that hands-on experience background as well. It's nice at the end of the day to feel that you have benefited yourself, you've put in a lot of hard work, um, but you also get to reward yourself. We have a great cafe with great food, you get a massage, you know, reward yourself that way for a job well done, working hard, keeping your health and your physical and, and mental well-being a, a priority for yourself. It's a great environment to be in. We all know we need to stay physically active, but women need a good mix of cardio and resistance exercises at least three times a week. Try to fit that in to help prevent osteoporosis, heart disease, and cancer. Here's what's coming up next on the show. Technology is a part of life, but it's creating new problems for younger adults. We'll tell you about Tech's Neck. Plus, one man's journey to sobriety with the help of Decision Point Center. Looking at a phone or tablet all day is creating new health problems for us. The doctors at Honor Health have some tips to deal with TextNet. My name is Kevin Kalsa. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon practicing here in Scottsdale, Arizona at Honor Health Thompson Peak. My job entails basically seeing people for all types of spinal injuries, spinal conditions, degenerative conditions like cervical spine, thoracic spine, and lumbar spine. And then I usually see clinic three times a week and I operate twice a week. And most of my surgeries are done here at Honor Health Thompson Peak. We're definitely seeing a lot of younger people coming in. Over the past five to six years, since the advent of the iPhone, especially cell phones becoming much cheaper, has changed what we see in our office. I am seeing a lot more teenagers come in with their parents complaining about neck pain and low back pain than I did probably five, six years ago. And in the general public, that's what we have started calling text neck. Your head, which weighs approximately 10 to 12 pounds in a neutral position with a neutral alignment, and you bring that neck into flexion, 
and for every 10 to 15 degrees of neck flexion, your neck weight is actually doubling. So you have these little tiny muscles of your neck which are holding your head up and approximately at 60 degrees of neck flexion, your head weighs the same amount as a bowling ball. So you have your tiny little neck muscles which are holding your neck, trying to bring them back up and you're constantly doing that throughout the day with an iPad or a cell phone. So it kind of makes sense when you come in at the end of the day and you're like, you go home and your neck is just absolutely aching. That's because of the fact that your little muscles are holding your neck up and trying their best to bring you back into alignment. So there are some ways to avoid text neck. One of the easiest ways is to obviously get away from that flexed posture of your cervical spine where you're constantly hunched over. So for the younger population, I tell their parents, you gotta have some text time where you give your kids cell phones for their particular usage for a particular amount of time, and then you take the cell phone away. But for the adults, it's constantly reminding the adults that even though you're working and your work is dependent upon the cell phone, you gotta maintain a good posture, bring the cell phone up towards your eyes, not looking down all the time. If you're working at a computer or a laptop, you gotta make sure it's at an eye level or even higher or maybe even get a stand-up desk at your workplace so you can stand up and work versus constantly sitting down and being in a flexed posture. It all comes down to a matter of balance. Yes, you have to work. Yes, you have to use your cell phone, and I do too. But at the same time, I understand, and so that's what I tell my patients is, have some balance. Take some time away from your electronic devices. Take some time to exercise, to check your posture, your low back posture. Maybe go see a physical therapist. And even in the gym, you can grab a trainer and just say, hey, why don't you help me figure out some new exercises that can correct my posture? So if you have any issues with neck pain like we discussed, Honor Health has a variety of physical therapists, specialists like myself. Please come visit our website and we'll be able to help you. While in college, Scott felt lost and turned to addictive substances to help him cope. But with the help of Decision Point Center, he found his passion and his sobriety. I was in college struggling with anxiety and depression because I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I grew up. Started drinking more and then found drugs and pretty much that just made the anxiety and depression you know, get worse, even though at the time I thought it was better, but it was what I was used to. And I would just go back and forth like, oh, I want to stop doing drugs. Oh, I don't want to stop doing drugs. I woke up one morning and my mom was like, hey, uh, someone's downstairs, they want to talk to you. And I go downstairs and there wasn't like an actual interventionist, but it was a bunch of, bunch of my friends, um, some, some of my close friends, their parents, they pretty much reassured me that I did need help and I was at a place where I was just so miserable about where I was. I was like, I do need a change. They were like, we want to send you this uh, place in Arizona. You get to go hiking, do a bunch of cool outdoor stuff. And I'm just like, sounds great. When do I leave? I didn't necessarily think I would stay sober, um, actually. I was sort of like, all right, I'll go to this rehab for 30 days, you know, just kind of throw a curveball in my life, mix it up, and then slowly I was able to come to terms with, hey, you know, being sober is actually a really good thing. I was actually very pleased because it wasn't like very institutional, hospitally. It was almost like I was going to Colorado and staying at like a condo. Like it was actually really nice. I even joked with one of my friends that uh, him and I both got sent to a mandatory summer camp. Um, just like, you know, kids when they go to summer camp, you know, they make friends, you know, we, we kind of do the same thing at Decision Point. We're here, we might as well make the best of it. I felt I actually had a real big impression on a lot of the clients there because I showed them how much fun they could have because, you know, they kind of came in like I did. They're like, oh, I'm in rehab. Uh, but uh, I was able to show them the fun side. It's a lot more to life than just drugs and alcohol, you know, especially with the outdoor program Decision Point has. You know, it showed me how much fun it is just to be outside, taking in nature. I've always been a big uh, wildlife nature person even before Decision Point. And then once a month, you would go on a couple day camping trip whether that be just car camping where your car's right there or like full on backpacking out through the wilderness. 
even now that I'm out, I thought rehab was great for me. Honestly, even if I didn't have a drug problem, I thought rehab would have been great because it taught me how to deal um, with stresses that you're gonna come across in your life. Now, almost nine years after my sobriety date, I'm working as a, a large predator handler at a wildlife park. Um, that's one thing that's really helping me stay sober along with the tools Decision Point taught me just because you know those animals mean the world to me and it really is a dream job. Thanks to Decision Point, I have almost nine years of sobriety. Another great tip, hit the dance floor. Dancing is a great way to keep your mind sharp and the moves don't have to be complicated. Even the simple ones will give your neurons a workout. Here's what's coming up next on the show. We'll show you how using today's technology can help you achieve your dream smile and a new program that will help end those bad food cravings. Having a healthy smile is important to your confidence and your overall health. Let's see how New Day Smile is helping patients reclaim their smile. Smiling is so important. You just don't realize it until you feel self-conscious. And I'm sure that anybody that's considering this knows exactly what I'm talking about. You uh, don't laugh as much or try not to smile as much. Uh, so socially, there, there is that little stigma about it. They say, Graham, you look so pretty. <laughs> you look really nice, Graham, with your new smile. New Day Smile is one of the most active implant centers in the country. We don't just provide dental treatment for people. We, we basically transform people's lives. We change people's lives. Because we're a general practice, but we still specialize on these complex cases, on the same day I could get a patient that has a great smile, um, no cavities, right? Then I'll get a patient that um, hasn't been to a dentist in 10, 15, 20 years. Um, their teeth are all decayed and they just don't know where to start. They, they, have, they don't think they're fixable or salvageable. And I always put it in my mind that, you know, you're gonna, this is your life, you know, you're gonna be going to the dentist all the time. Your teeth are gonna hurt all the time. There's gonna be discomfort all the time. Your food, your diet is gonna be the same all the time. The thing that keeps people uh, away from dental work is either the expense, fear, or embarrassment. And that's the hardest thing for people to overcome. Once they come here, we're gonna take care of them. When I was little, I had a bad experience. So any dentist I went to, you know, after that, you know, I was just nervous and would prolong going to the dentist. I mean, that's one of the reasons I had such problems was because I was phobic about the dentist. I feel so unstressed about coming in here. Each visit was something that I looked forward to, whereas in the past when I had to go back to a dentist, I didn't look forward to it. People want to feel comfortable. Some of these people have waited years to go see the dentist, and the last thing they want is to someone um, give them a lecture about why did you wait or why did, you know, things happen. Um, we're not here to judge anybody, we're here to help. We walk them through this process and guide them to getting healthy again. You know, that's, a, that's the most important part that we forget about this. Like, oh, we just look at teeth and the smile. But it's also affecting your overall health. Okay, so we help these patients, um, you know, not just get a beautiful smile again and be functional, okay? Um, look good, be happy, be confident again, but also just get them healthy again. And it's such a relief to be able to smile. You know, I, I can look into the mirror and say, Hey, you got a nice smile there. I would say that my new teeth are there forever. <laughs> and I like them. Don't go away, we have more to come on your health. If weight loss is on your to-do list, we'll give you information on a program to get you on the right track. When we put a big emphasis on our weight and it can sometimes limit us. Weight Watchers has a program that's easy and can help you break through those limitations. 
Weight Watchers is the number one most successful weight loss company in the country because they make it easy for people and I don't need to hover over them and ask them what they're eating. They have a point system that is easy to follow. They have a very easy to use app where people can go on and have accountability through that. They can go to workshops where other people are going through the same things that they're going through, which makes it easy when you see that there's other people that are relating to your condition. It truly is an overall holistic program. And when people lose weight and eat better, they start feeling better. And when we encourage them to use some of that feeling better, into moving a little more and adding to their activity. And the next thing you know, they're walking and they're exercising. There's limitations that we set on ourselves because of our weight, sometimes real and sometimes in our heads. But at Weight Watchers, we learned that those limitations are possible to break through. Weight Watchers has taught me how to do a pulse check on myself. Where am I at in the moment that I'm wanting to reach for the bag of chips or the bag of cookies or in my case the loaf of French bread. <laughs> it's definitely taught me to, to pause and evaluate. Since joining Weight Watchers I'm off of all medications and I have ar arthritis that was really bothering me before and that doesn't bother me as much anymore because I think the healthy diet helps with the inflammation. I ended up actually cooking a lot more and eating at home more and making smarter snack decisions and I lost 25 pounds. When I went on this plan I was like pre-diabetic the next time they did my blood work, it had gone down 18 points, and my cholesterol had gone down 11. Weight Watchers is about you and you eating healthier food on a regular basis and changing your life for the better. Before we go, here are a few more tips to help you achieve better health. As women, we must get our health screenings, including a mammogram and pap test. Remember to wear sunscreen and do a skin check once a month. Look for any striking, dark, or changing spots or moles and visit a dermatologist once a year. Cut out stress as much as you can. It's one of the biggest issues for women and can have significant health consequences like infertility and heart disease. So find a stress buster like meditation and stick with it. Remember, putting yourself first allows you to be there for others. Thank you for joining us on Your Health. I'm Erica Cardenas. See you next time.